So let us start with development economics. Uh, although this is a Delhi University course, but development economics will remain development economics only uh, with, with in whichever university you are studying. So more or less, the topics are going to be similar. Might be they will use some other book, but uh, the topics more or less are going to remain same. So you can follow this to learn development economics. I mean, uh, so I'll be following the reading list of Delhi University. Um, and you can uh, make notes alongside me. And so let me just give you some idea of what are the four topics which we are going to cover in this uh, series. Uh, so there are four broad topics which you have. One is uh, introducing economic development, global perspective. Now, the main readings uh, for this is uh, Todaro and Smith, chapter one and two. They will take some time, although chapter one is very easy. There is hardly anything in that chapter. I've just seen that, but I'll be picking up things, things from both of them. And uh, in that also, the main thing is HDI, human development, and the characteristics of uh, uh, so human development and uh, the characteristics of development economy, uh, de uh, developing economies. That also might come. Now, in whichever book you will start. Uh, you will always have these topics in whichever university you are. You will always have these topics. Then you have uh, theories of economic development. So it's a big topic in which uh, you will have uh, to Darrow and Smith chapter three. I mean, chapter is only one chapter, but again, you will have to do almost the entire chapter here. So these are classic theories of uh, economic development. It's maybe uh, there are few topics uh, in this chapter. Let me just give you an idea of them. So you have uh, theories like Rosto stages of growth, Harrod Dahmer model. Uh, you have uh, uh, Lewis theory of economic development. That is very important. You will definitely get a question on that. Um, then you have neoclassical dependence model, false paradigm model, all of these. So these, uh, these are going to be there in this particular chapter. And they will be, I guess, in, in any case, uh, you will be asked uh, a question over two or three questions might be asked from this particular topic. And then you have the strategy of uh, economic development. Strategy of economic development, you have uh, Nurse's reading. Uh, now, this is uh, this, I feel, is a little difficult unit. In terms of readings, it's not that you have too many readings. There are many three readings here, but the language of the readings are difficult in uh, in this particular topic. Uh, and one is your Heishman's reading. I'll get. I always get confused in his spelling. Heishman. There was chapter three of his book, uh, and then you have one more of uh, Amitabh Dutta. So these are definitely going to be there. And then you have an interesting topic again, from which you will surely have uh, a question, which is poverty and inequality. So you have, uh, um, there is a reading by Amrita Singh. And this reading is very good for capability deprivation, right? Then you have Debraj Ray. Um, this is for an for economic inequality. And the another one is again Devraj Ray. Poverty and undernutrition.
So basically, this is the course which we want to cover. So let us see how far uh, we are able to do and in how many days, I don't know. So uh, this is what we're going to do. Just make notes alongside. It doesn't matter in which book is being followed in your university. But our topic is the same. Lewis model will remain Lewis model. Harriet Dahmer is going to remain Harriet Dahmer. It is not going to change. Right? So the topics are going to remain same only. So you may be from whichever university, please make notes alongside that is there. And you need to have patience while uh, you make notes because uh, um, you will have to write also. I mean, probably you should be writing uh, what I'm writing and also not what I'm not writing. Uh, because at the end of the semester, you should have something tangible in your hand, your own effort in terms of the notes which you have made. Right? So uh, let's start. So there is, uh, so the first question which we are asking, this is uh, basically from chapter one to Darrow and Smith. So the first question which we are asking is, what is development economics? What is development economics? So one of the view is that it is not a separate branch. It is just the application of various economic fields to Asia, Africa, uh, Latin America. So it is not something which is very different, right? So one view is that. It is not a separate branch. It is like you are applying uh, uh, application of various economic fields to countries like Asia, Africa, Latin America. Application. of various economic fields countries like asia africa latin america right and there is another view also Another view says what another, another view tells us that uh, it is not, see, the way economic theories could be applied to the core countries, to uh, developed countries, you cannot apply them similarly to these developing countries because their characteristics are completely different, right? So it is not the same. Not the same as economics of developed capitalists countries. So it is focusing mainly on under. Uh, developed nations. And these underdeveloped nations, they have different uh, ideological in, uh, orientations. They have different cultural backgrounds also. So they're not similar to all of these capitalist countries. So that they have different ideological orientations they have diverse cultural backgrounds
So on the one hand, you have uh, uh, traditional economics. And traditional economics is concerned with the efficient, low-cost allocation of the scarce resources. So whatever resources are there, how do you allocate it in the minimal uh, at the minimal cost so that it can produce the maximum amount? So if it is concerned mainly with efficient. and low cost allocation of scarce resources right and it is also traditional economics is also focusing on what is the optimal growth over time to expand the production of growth of goods and services right so it is focusing on optimal growth over time So what should be the optimal growth over time in order to maximize the production of goods and services at the lowest possible cost, right? So all of this is going to work in case if you're going to assume um, uh, that there is an advanced economy and they have perfect markets. But do you think perfect markets exist in developing economies? No. So all of this works in the advanced capitalist world with perfect markets. Right. So it assumes a lot of things. It assumes that consumer is sovereign. It assumes that the prices are going to adjust automatically, doesn't it? Right. So, in case if there is excess supply, prices are going to fall. In case if there is excess demand, prices are going to rise. Uh, so, all of this might well might work very well in the capitalist economy. Might well might work very well in the perfect markets. Uh, and the decisions which you take, you take on the basis of the marginal cost benefit kind of analysis, right? So where price is equal to the marginal utility. Uh, so you don't do it like that, uh, where mu1 by p1 is equal to lambda. Uh, so uh, where, where price is equal to the marginal utility, where price is equal to the marginal cost. Now that is the point at which you will be uh, consuming or you will be producing. Uh, people are assumed to be rational. They are assumed to be self-centered. All of these assumptions might not work very well in the developing economies, they say. So it assumes. And then you have political economy. So political economy is studying the interaction between politics and economics. So it is, it is uh, concerned with what is the role of power in the economic decision making. So on the other hand, you have political economy. So it tries to study the interaction between economics and politics. What is the role of power? I mean, those people who are in power, how that power is going to influence decision making. So all of that is going to be studied under political economy. So power's role in economic decision making. Right. So, and the development economics comes with even more expanded scope. Then development economics come. This comes with expanded scope. 
so there are idle resources in developing uh, countries how do you make use of those idle resources which are not used anywhere so how do you use them efficiently so aims for the efficient utilization of idle resources for efficient utilization of idle resources and development economics is mainly uh, talking about the sustained growth through what not only through the economic uh, mechanism but also through social mechanism through political mechanism through institutional mechanism right so all of them combined will make the scope of development economics so it seeks both public and private efforts also so it is not only that um, we are concerned with the private markets but also the government intervention so that even these private markets can work efficiently if they could or, or whichever way they could work right so the main objective of development economics is to achieve the rapid development in these developing economies of 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 which regions of asia of latin america of sub saharan africa like that right so achieve if you look at the developing economies of asia africa latin america you will find this that most of the times the markets are imperfect so you have big monopolies sometimes there is a lot of government intervention uh, consumers they do not have perfect information there is a lot of asymmetric information and sometimes even producers don't have right and uh, all of these economies they are also going under major structural transformation right so there are changes which are going on in the developing economy so you can't assume the traditional economics which was mainly concerned with these capitalist systems to work perfectly well for developing economies also so kudaro and smith are giving a giving a, a, a they are creating a base then why do we have to study development economics right so fine i'll stop here we'll take the discussion further in the next class thank you beta